In this video of Robotics for Beginners series, I will explain everything you need to know about sensors, different types of sensors, connecting sensors to Arduino, and its application in DIY hobby projects for you to get started with your own robot. Like the previous video, I will try to make this video as interesting and simple as possible so that everyone can understand everything easily in a fun way. Before going further, let me introduce you to the sponsor of this video, Well PCB. If you want quality PCBs for a low price for your hobby projects, check out Well PCB. Well PCB is a PCB manufacturer specializing in PCB prototyping, flexible PCBs, low volume production, and neat and tidy PCB assembly. They deliver high quality PCBs faster and cheaper. Check out the link below to know more about them. Let's get started with a simple question. What is a sensor? Basically, sensors are specially designed devices or objects that will detect the properties, events or changes in the environment and then provide corresponding signal. They are one of the crucial instruments which will bridge the physical world and the electronic world. Here are some of the sensors that we commonly use in everyday projects. We have IR sensors which will sense infrared rays, ultrasonic sensors to sense ultrasonic sound, heat sensors to sense temperature, pressure sensors to sense touch or pressure, and there are so much more. How does a sensor work? All the sensors will have an input and an output. The input will be the physical quantity we will be measuring and the output will be the change in electrical property of the sensor element. Sensors react to changing physical quantity by altering their electrical properties. For example, this photodiode, which is a sensor that would change its resistance with respect to ambient light. This change in resistance can be detected by the circuit or the microcontroller by proportional change in voltage where it is connected. In some cases, the output will be very low, so the sensor element alone might not be sufficient enough to analyze the obtained signal. In such cases, a signal conditioning circuit is required in order to amplify and filter the signal produced by the sensor element in the desired range with respect to the microcontroller. The sensor element and the conditioning circuit is together known as the sensor module. For example, in the case of a microphone, it detects audio signal and converts to output voltage which will be in terms of millivolts. This voltage is not enough to drive a circuit. So, an amplifier will be used to increase the signal strength before using it in circuits like clap switches or feeding it to Arduino. This is basically how a sensor works. Based on the type of output signal, there are mainly two types of sensors, digital and analog sensors. Digital sensors are kind of like on-off switches. Either there is light or not, 1 or 0, true or false. But the world is not just zeros and ones, is it? What if you want to measure ambient light using LDR or temperature using temperature sensor? What if you want to measure values between zeros and ones? That's where we use analog sensors. Analog sensors are very simple. It has a voltage output that can vary with respect to the external physical quantity. This way, you can measure the correct value of light and not just black or white. Typically, the analog voltages are input to a microcontroller like Arduino via the analog pins. We now have measured the physical quantity and convert to its electrical equivalent. All we need to do is read it with the help of an Arduino and do something useful. Arduino has several input-output pins, generally known as GPIO pins or general purpose input-output pins that are designed either to provide an input to the processor or get output from the processor. You will be making use of these pins to read the data from the sensors. Microcontrollers in Arduino boards are capable of detecting binary signals or digital signals, 0 or 1. That is, for a 5 volt Arduino board, it understands 0 volt as logic 0 and a voltage above 3 volt as logic 1. In most of the boards, almost all the GPIO pins in Arduino can be used as digital pins, which means it can be used to connect digital output sensors and read digital values. To measure the value of analog signals, the Arduino has built-in analog to digital converters at certain pins. These ADC circuits turn the analog voltage into a digital value which the Arduino can read. These pins are what we call analog pins. This is where we connect the analog sensor input. Different boards will be having different number of analog pins. For example, Arduino Uno has 6 analog pins, A0 to A5. Let me know how many analog pins you have in your Arduino board. Simply comment the board name and the number of pins. Within the category of digital sensors, there is another set of sensor modules whose output is available in the form of data transmitted via certain serial protocols like UART or I2C or SPI. Such sensors are interfaced to the communication channels to receive data using the microcontroller. Using this sensor output, we can write conditions in your Arduino code and upload it to your Arduino board and do fun stuff like 
turning on a bulb when ambient light is low or making an autonomous robot like a line follower which will sense its path using IR sensor and follows the line. I have a list of sensors which are beginner friendly, easy to get started with and very easy to hook up with Arduino and learn its working. So if you want, I will leave the link in the description. Let me know in the comments if I missed any beginner friendly sensors. Now as usual, an example. Consider this line following robot using Arduino. This robot uses IR sensor to detect the track and use motors to move around depending upon the color of the track. Here. IR sensor is the sensor that senses the environment and gathers input. IR sensors mainly consist of an IR transmitter, an IR LED and an IR receiver, usually a photodiode. IR LED always emits IR rays to the direction it is pointing to. Now, let us bring it closer to a surface. When the IR rays hit a surface, some rays will be reflected back depending upon the color of the surface. Which means, the brighter the color is, the more IR will be reflected back. The darker the color is, more IR will be absorbed by the surface and lesser IR rays will be reflected back. These reflected rays are received by the photodiode and depending upon the intensity of the received IR rays, the resistance of the photodiode varies which will in turn vary the output voltage. So, an IR sensor makes it very easy to measure how bright the surface is which will make it easy for us to track the line. We will feed these signals to Arduino through GPIO pins and the Arduino controls the motor and decides which way the robot should go. Using these sensors, the robot senses the path, takes a decision by its own and reacts to its environment by moving only through the black path. This is how a sensor works in a robot. Like I mentioned in the previous video, the most basic autonomous robot you can build in your home is a line follower. You can make a line follower with or without a microcontroller. If you are interested, I will share the link in the description. In the next video of the series, I will explain the muscles of the robot, the motors. There. We will be focusing on what a motor is, different types of motors and how we can use them in robots. If you are really interested in DIY robotics, check out our channel. You will find lots of fun stuff to make using Arduino and lots of other components. Hit the subscribe button and stay tuned for more awesome videos. See you soon guys.